Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for September the 6th of 2019. Well, it is titled Recycling Cassiopeia A. So what do we see here? Well, this is an example of a supernova remnant known as Cassiopeia A. Why does it get that kind of name? Well, it's the naming convention that has been used for radio sources in the sky. And the first one that was discovered in any given constellation was given the letter A. And this convention has remained and a lot of the common radio sources, some of the strongest ones, are still called by this. Things like our galactic center as Sagittarius A and one of the um, and many other objects as well. Now Cassiopeia A is actually a supernova remnant and that is the remnant of a star that has exploded. So what hap can happen at the end of a star's life is that it becomes unstable. And without going into all the details here, it will become unstable, it will implode and then explode outward. And what we're seeing here is all of those outer layers of the star expanding out into space. Now Cassiopeia, uh, this supernova remnant would have been seen about 350 years ago here on Earth. That's when the light from the supernova would have reached us. The actual explosion would have taken place 11,000 years before because that is the distance of Cassiopeia A from us. So in astronomy, we have to remember that it takes time for the light to get to us. So we never see anything as it is right now. And in fact, we still see this supernova remnant as it was 11,000 years ago. How it looks today, that light that's just leaving it today will not reach us for another 11,000 years. So in astronomy, we never see anything as it is at that instant. Now, what is meant by recycling Cassiopeia A? Well, this is in a way a cosmic recycling. And in another way, this is where we all come from. Things like this are what produce the heavier elements. The original Big Bang created hydrogen and helium, and that was it. And of course, we know our bodies are consisted of lots of atoms other than hydrogen and helium. So we have to where did those come from? And they were produced within stars. Stars fuse lighter atoms like hydrogen and helium into heavier ones. And the way those get back out into space is at the end of the life of a massive star, when they are expelled out like this, they will then expel out into the interstellar medium and become part of the seed material for future generations of stars. So that first generation of stars that formed 14 billion years ago could have only been made essentially of hydrogen and helium. And those first generation would then have formed some of the heavier elements, which would allow for a small amount of other heavier materials to be present in the second generation of stars and so on. And as we got through many, many generations of stars, we got to the point where we are today, where 90% of the atoms are hydrogen and 10% are helium. And there's now a smattering of heavier elements, but enough that we can now begin to form planets like the Earth that have uh, that are composed not just of hydrogen and helium, but have things like silicon and iron have heavier elements present in them, and can form life forms like us, which depend on things like carbon as the basis of our life. So in a way, we all come from here and most of the elements in your body except for the hydrogen would have been would have been expelled out into the universe in something like a supernova explosion that we see here today. So that was our picture of the day for September the 6th of 2019. It was titled Recycling Cassiopeia A. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be Wolf's Dusty Cave. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.